Beloved, I bring you glad tidings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Today, I am speaking to you on the subject of forgiveness. Forgiveness, a component of the healing phase of Dominion Recovery. Forgiveness, the F component of the healing phase of Dominion Recovery. As I have said in Dominion Recovery Intro 1, Intro 2, and Intro 3, there are three phases in the Dominion Recovery mission of God. As God restores man back to that which man lost, man lost his place of dominion according to the mandate of God in the life of man. The Bible says Jesus Christ came to restore that which was lost. Now, forgiveness is a very important component of the healing phase of the dominion recovery. Forgiveness actually has a very important place in the schemata of the dominion recovery mission. We actually see that without forgiveness, there is no remission of sins because then there must be repentance and then forgiveness forgiveness is of the lord and that is why we see that jesus did not only heal people he forgave them of their sins there were people who were healed by jesus just saying that your sins are forgiven you now we come to the place where we notice that in the in in, in the old testament forgiveness was very important while Israel, the Jews, were actually called like a people, like they were a type, if you want to say it, they were a type of Jesus. If you thought that Jesus, God was going to use one person as a mediator to lead into reconciliation in a perfect relationship with him in the kingdom, God had begun or had started this with the Jews with the Israelites. He had called them and to use them as an example. They were supposed to, through his covenant, create a perfect relationship with him through which God was going to restore the fallen man Adam and his offspring back to a perfect relationship with him like as it were in heaven. But even the children of Israel, through the different covenants that God made with their fathers, could not actually keep the commandments of God. They sinned, and you actually saw that at different times, God has to use the prophets to warn them of the consequences of sins if they would not repent for them to, to have forgiveness from God so that the judgment of God and the consequences of the judgment will not be their portion. And so you see, we, 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 we understand that sin has opened us to the judgment of God and forgiveness will lead to redemption. Forgiveness from God will turn us from the, from the judgment of God to the place of living a perfect relationship, to the place of living a happy relationship, to the place of living the relationship that Jesus said, I came that they may have abundance. Now the Bible says that let us seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto us. What are the things that shall be added to us? The blessings of keeping the commandments of God. The blessings of keeping the statutes of the kingdom. The blessings of keeping the order of the kingdom. It is Deuteronomy 28 that captures it. When very well, when God says in the first couple of verses from verse 1 going right down to 14. If you keep my commandments, these are the things that will follow you. You shall be the head and not the tail. I will bless your, your, your handiwork. I will do this. I will do that. God begins to tell us of the goodness that comes from keeping the commandments. But he now introduces what, what the, the negatives, the suffering, the sickness, the sorrow, the, the, the shame and all the negatives of sin. That's why the prophets, the minor as they call them, the major prophets, each individually was warning the people of God of the consequences of sin and calling the people to repent so that God may forgive them. Jesus Christ of Nazareth was a spiritual lamb 
that was sacrificed for the forgiveness of sins. We actually see that where there is no forgiveness of sins, there is no liberation. Where there is no forgiveness of sins, there is no restoration. Where there is no forgiveness of sins, relationships are not restored. Can we imagine spouses and couples, people in relationship who have grudges one with another? You know that where there is no forgiveness, we can pretend as if everything is going on right. But in the depths of our mind, we have scores to settle. And we may settle those scores through cold wars, through the things we say, through the right things we write, through the pronouncements we make, through the hatred in our heart and the anger against our own, our blood, our friends, our brothers and sisters, our neighbors, our people in the world, through terrorism and other things. Unforgiveness. But there are, there, are, there are positives that go with forgiveness. That's why Jesus took time off to teach the disciples, to teach his people of the negatives of unforgiveness and the positive of forgiveness. When the people sin in, 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 in God, calling them for them to be able to keep or for them to have a covenant relationship with him, they were not able to keep the covenant relationship with, with, with him. And God had to use the mediation of the priest of the people that he had put in place for them to come and do atonement for the sins of the people. And every time the high priest and the priest will come and sacrifice lambs and animals and shedding the blood of animals for the remission of the sins of the people to create as it were to lead to forgiveness from the heart of God but how many times were they going to come in repentance that God may forgive them that is why God sought a lamb without blemish that there will be the slaughtering the shedding of blood once for the forgiveness of sins forever that is why Jesus is the perfect lamb that came for the forgiveness of our sins once and forever and that's why Jesus taught his disciples the need for forgiveness when they came to him and asked him how many times should we forgive our brothers and sisters he said 77 times 7 which meant that you need to forgive and forgive and forgive when there is ever a need because the Bible says that he who has a grudge he who hates his brother he who has unforgiveness against his brother is a murderer and murderers can never inherit the kingdom of God the Bible tells us to forgive our pe people the Bible tells us to forgive our neighbors. The Bible tells nations to forgive other people. You who are doing terrorism, do you think that you can right the wrongs yourself? You who is standing to say that your father took threw away my mother and we suffer, do you think that you can, you can solve the problems that stepfather relationship has created? No, you cannot. You may be doing a patch, patchwork and creating more problems and you think that you are solving the problem. You think that you are smart. You think that you are powerful. You think that because you have maybe some governmental positions and you can do whatever you can. Let me tell you, let me warn you that you are creating more problems for others. You are creating more problems for your children by doing that which you are doing. The Bible says forgive. If by divine divine orientation your father, your mother was thrown away, maybe certain things were done. Maybe the spirit of witchcraft and other methods were used to throw away your own and you suffered God in his infinite understanding of the whole creation of the world knew that that was going to happen and he has forgiven he has forgiven he will forgive you he will forgive them that he will bless everybody the Bible says God speaking vengeance is mine I will repay do you want to be God lose them let go release yourself from the from the consequences of unforgiveness from the negative repercussions of unforgiveness from that which the devil uses to kill to steal and to destroy unforgiveness my brother and sisters the bible has made it very clear that unforgiveness can create havoc in our lives and that is why God comes in to tell us to forgive. I know it is hard. Do you know Dr. Thompson? Do you know Reverend Dr. Thompson what that woman did to, to my mother and my father? I know they may have killed your mother. 
killed your brother, did everything that they did, so what? You are still alive. Dr. Thompson, do you know what they did to our ancestor? They sold our ancestor to slavery. Do you know how our ancestor fought? Do you know how our ancestor suffered? Should we still forgive those people? Forgive us, for we are the seeds of maybe those who sold you. But you know what? That doesn't mean that we did not come from the same root. That's why the film root is trying to teach that we come from the same root. And unforgiveness is creating a lot of problems. Maybe you are Joseph and your brother sold you away to America. Maybe they sold you away to foreign lands and they thought that they were doing them. They were, they were doing good. They meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. Forgive them for they know not what to do. Jesus on the cross on that day said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they, what they are doing. Jesus forgave me. Jesus forgave you. Jesus forgave those who killed them. Jesus forgave even Judas is carried. But Jesus, Judas could not find it within his heart to forgive himself. That's why Judas killed himself. Judas betrayed Jesus like Peter and the others who fled away. Peter denied Jesus three times. That was betraying. That was killing Jesus. If Jesus could forgive and, and, and restore Peter, Jesus could restore Judas if Judas had not killed himself. Please, let guilt, let shame, let all of that that you did not make you not to forgive yourself. Father has forgiven you. There is no lesser or major sin. You did it in ignorance. Father has forgiven you. He has cleansed you. He wants to take away the shame from you. Maybe it's abortion and you are saying, I killed that child. Can I ever be forgiven? The soul of the child is crying up against me. Father said for that cause, Jesus shed his blood and you have been released. Only go to the Father and ask for forgiveness. You will be forgiven and Father has the ability to forget and start all over with you. Beloved, whatever it is, I ask you to join me in this prayer. Father, forgive them and forgive us for we know not what we do. And I soak us in the blood of Jesus. I declare and declare and declare that whatsoever, what, what, whatever that we hold against people, whatever growth we hold against people, may they not be used by the devil to destroy, to destroy them. And whatever grudges people hold against us, may the devil not use them against us as I break the power of unforgiveness over our lives, over your lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. May God bless us. Amen.